discussion of the African plate. This first picture gives the um, outline of the plate, uh, which is the African continent, surrounded by Indian, South Atlantic Ocean, and some of the Central Atlantic, and uh, a division through the Mediterranean Sea and Red Sea, uh, Gulf of Arabia. It's one of the large plates of Earth, and uh, it's surrounded on almost all sides by ocean, which is expanding along the mid-ocean ridges, so that the uh, net result is Africa has gradually been moving northwards towards the Eurasian plate. And that is a um, zone of uh, crushing against uh, Eurasia through the Alpine ranges and the Mediterranean today. Uh, the, that northern margin of the Mediterranean is complex, collisional, but the Dead Sea, Red Sea, and Gulf of Aden are largely extensional. Oceans would grow faster there if um, there was not so much resistance from the huge Eurasian plate. <clears throat> If you look at the continental crust of Africa, there are broad zones of bedrock, uh, which are regarded as cratons or stable areas of very ancient rocks, for the greater part, red and orange colours, well, all those red and orange colours, colours are greater than uh, 1500 million years, and uh, even many areas within the purple zones are over a billion years or even more. So these are stable blocks that have gradually built up or accreted, uh, accrued into what we call cratons. Um, they're like separate microcontinents within the major continent of Africa. And uh, the, these are major subdivisions of crustal Africa and include uh, areas known as the West African craton sticking out into the Atlantic Congo and Cameroon, right in the center there, the red zone, and Tanzania, etc. In a way, pack ice resembles the structure of continents. You can see how there are older blocks of ice incorporated within newer zones within each of these slabs of pack ice. Um, and then there are the new leads, which might be regarded as the new oceans like the Atlantic which separate the uh, larger blocks and allow um, more ice to freeze around the edges of them, which is what effectively is going on with Africa today. More ocean crust is forming in these leads and building on to the continent of Africa or to the plate of Africa. So here's an outline uh, from the web of the African, some might call the Nubian plate because in in fact, uh, the eastern section, the Somali plate, is effectively cracking away uh, down the great eastern um, rift valley of um, Africa. And uh, Arabia, likewise, has cracked away to be uh, actually moving um, independently of the main African continent today. As you can see by arrows there, the uh, main one at 21.5 millimetre per year um, is um, the African continent moving into Eurasia, whereas uh, Arabia is moving um, more northerly or even slightly west of north, and uh, it's rotating um, Turkey. So Turkey is opposed to being squeezed like a pea in a pod against um, Eurasia in the north. The big blue patch north of Turkey is the Black Sea. And of course, the Alps is undergoing orogeny still. That means mountain building due to the subduction uh, of the African oceanic uh, areas, which are hidden by Mediterranean Sea today. See the um, um, blue plate margin there in the far.
New Zealand plate comes through the mid-Atlantic across the South American plate likewise. The Antic Antarctic plate in the Southern Oceans and uh, if we regarded the Somali plate, then um, that's a border which still exists. Mediterranean, so the blue line is the um, boundary coming through from central Mediterranean in the west through uh, the uh, Straits of Gibraltar, taking a little bit of um, northern Morocco and swinging north of uh, Sicily to uh, uh, go into the Adriatic Sea somewhat and swing southward in a great subduction arc known as the Hellenic. Uh, arc, volcanic arc, uh, which is where Santorini uh, responds to that subduction zone in the Aegean Sea, and then it swings across past Crete um, and turns southward along the Dead Sea Rift, shown in green, which is largely a transfer fault with lateral movement rather than the subduction, which goes on in part around the Anatolian fault um, zone um, and into the Zagros Mountains of Iran and Iraq at the top of the uh, picture. And this states that the African plate has been moving northeastward at about 20 kilometers every million years and is colliding with the Eurasian plate. So the former, former Tethys Ocean, of which Mediterranean is only a remnant, has been closing and oceanic crust of the African plate has been subducting beneath Europe, crushing it into the European Alps. So that's the principle of subduction with oceanic crust being dense and basaltic in composition, relatively thin compared with continental crust, say eight kilometers compared with 30 kilometers for continental crust, which is lighter and uh, with many more lighter minerals like uh, silica, which is not present in basalt. But the plates themselves are about 100 kilometers thick, comprising the lithosphere and crust. The lithosphere is effectively the top part of the mantle. And the asthenosphere within the mantle is um, um, capable of um, convectional flow and puts drag upon the plates and results in that subduction. And this is how oceanic crust is destroyed in the mantle. Uh, of course, it's created along the um, spreading zones of mid-ocean ridges. And uh, of the three plate boundaries shown here, we're looking at the um, central one on the right, the convergent plate boundary, the crushing together of plates. Uh, above it is the divergent one, characteristic of, say, the Central Atlantic, Central Indian and Southern Oceans, where the plates are being pulled apart by convection currents and um, intrusion of basaltic rocks results in bands of new crustal, oceanic crustal material. The third type of transform fault is uh, shown at the bottom. These are the uh, transfer faults or transforms that um, tend to join um, other plate boundaries such as subduction zones or um, divergent zones and uh, sliding plate boundaries such as the Dead Sea Rift. And the North African Oceanic crust is subducting beneath the Mediterranean region and Eurasia so that uh, volcanic arcs result. There's Mount Etna in Sicily is one example and the Hellenic Arc in the Aegean Sea, uh, where Santorini occurs, is um, uh, most typical. And here is the Hellenic Arc, Aegean Sea. So that little platelet is moving southward at 37 millimeters a year, compared with the African plate movement in the opposite direction of some 20 millimeters. Um, and as I mentioned before, the pink plate, which is um, the Turkish or Anatolian plate is actually being pinched by the northward. Uh, 
Um, the red are also under uh, con um, convergence, whereas green zones are transferred, uh, transform faults or lateral moving faults, most notable of which would be the Anatolian fault in northern Turkey, northern boundary in Turkey, just south of the Black Sea, um, which uh, has had major earthquakes uh, in historic times. And this cross section of the South Atlantic illustrates the principle of Earth's convection currents that uh, drive the plate movement by frictional forces. The African plate is expanding at mid-Atlantic, uh, so also of course as the uh, South American plate, and also at the mid-Indian Ocean. In both spreading ridges, uh, there's material or uh, oceanic crust being added to the African plate. The net result is northward movement of the African plate. It's only in the Mediterranean Sea that hidden subduction, subduction beneath um, plates so it's related to the Eurasian plate is taking place. In fact, if we look at the consequences of that subduction, where there's continent to continent collision in the Central European Alps, various platelets, uh, and also the um, main African plate shown in um, uh, blue here at a very low level, uh, major sections of the mantle and oceanic crust possibly pushing through, but including continental margin material of the African plate, and some of which is overriding the entire complex structure of the Alps, uh, as in these yellow uh, and fawn colors. And uh, the highest sections of the Alps are actually material that's been derived from Africa. And there's hundreds of kilometers of lateral movement involved in this crushing zone, which is an orogeny or mountain building episode uh, known as the Alpine orogeny. And that's been going on for uh, the best part of 100 million years and is still going on currently. This reflects the subduction of the African oceanic crust in the Mediterranean Sea. So although normally diagrams uh, are presented just as continents drifting, we have to remember that these are plates often with much more associated oceanic crust than we normally see. If you think of Africa today, of course, in the bottom right-hand diagram, um, what we're once occupied the red spot out in the middle of the Atlantic, it's now moved um, thousands of kilometers um, in an accurate fashion towards the Eurasian mass. And effectively, all of that um, movement has been taken up by subduction of oceanic crust and shortening within the various alpine ranges, like the European Alps, Carpathians, and the uh, uh, mountain ranges of Iran and Iraq, um, the uh, Zagros Mountains, etc. So it's um, just an um, but an abbreviation where we show continents drifting in this manner, it's really platelets that geologists need to study because that's where the uh, uh, marginal effects are seen of these movements. In fact, uh, continental rocks, uh, both types of rocks do give a signature of where they were formed. So in fact, um, oceanic rocks forming in the mid-Atlantic today would give us an approximate uh, latitude uh, due to the uh, manner in which the little magnetic particles still parallel to the uh, Earth's magnetic field. It's a study all in itself, but you get uh, an overall picture of migration of continents. Uh, if any uh, major change occurs, this can be registered too, but in longitude only. Um, and latitude only, I beg your pardon, there is no measure of longitude. So we would be unable to say from the rocks that Africa was once um, 
which is point in central uh, Atlantic today. However, we would be able to uh, register its movement northward by looking at uh, rocks of uh, 100, uh, 120 million years old and those of today and comparing the uh, magnetic fields in them. The movement of continents thus is traced from the original fit of the continents and by estimates of uh, longitudes I've written there, it's, um, it's latitudes at which rocks originated. That's incorrect. This is successful for the spread of Pangaea in the last 200 million years and the northward rotation of the African plate. Clearly, the northward movement is latitudinal. We don't have a measure for longitude, so that's an incorrect um, legend there. This allows the uh, presentation of maps such as this one, where you have banding um, for the age of new oceanic crust. The red lines register effectively plate margins today and around most of the African plate that's forming new ocean crust, zero age. Not so um, across the northern boundary, um, effectively as far as the uh, Sea of Aden from central Atlantic through the Mediterranean, uh, and down the Dead Sea Rift and the Red Sea and out the uh, uh, Gulf of Aden, you uh, uh, don't have significant um, new oceanic crust. Begging my pardon, you do in the Red Sea Gulf of Aden. So it's only through the Mediterranean zone, really, that um, we see no new oceanic crust which we could uh, establish age. Um, but the yellow on the map um, would register the last, uh, say, 30 million years, getting back to green at 60 million years and going to blue at probably 120, maybe 160 or even 180 million years for the opening of the central Atlantic. If we look up there, there's a pale blue outside the green, and that indicates the opening of that ocean about 160 million years ago. Now, the complexity of Europe is quite obvious. Um, the Eurasian is continually crushed, opened and closed, and uh, we don't have that simple pattern of oceanic rocks. Uh, again, uh, there's the distortion around the Antarctic plate, uh, partly due to the uh, Mercator projection and, the, and approaching the pole. Continental separation and new ocean formation is effectively due to heat rising from below and ponding or collecting um, under a supercontinent like Pangaea or Gondwana, and this results in broad doming, and then fracturing develops with the collapse of rift zones, and subsidence in the rift um, allows high heat flow and volcanism, and gradually the spread of the rift increases and true oceanic basaltic crust develops. You get a mid-ocean spreading ridge. And then the ocean and oceanic crust continues to build onto these original plates and separates the continents in a new ocean or by new ocean and as a new enlarged plate. So if we look at um, East Africa today, um, the uh, dotted lines effectively represent um, developing plate boundaries or um, existing plate boundaries in the case of the uh, uh, Red Sea and uh, Arabian Gulf. But uh, there's new sections of plate irrespective of whether we regard the Somalian plate as part of Africa today. Uh, there are new doming areas, uh, the Kenya Dome with central Lake Victoria and the um, uh, dome in Ethiopia. Um, which uh, are outlined there by the uh, cream colored dashed boundary. So we have it down the side there, various times at which separations occurred 
about 170 million years ago, we had India and Madagascar separating from Africa. And then uh, some 35 million years later, India separated from Antarctica. And uh, uh, about 75 million One of the uh, final acts, 25 to 20 million years ago, India has collided with Eurasia. And you'll notice in this older diagram, I've said, will the uh, Somali plate separate? Well, many regard it as a, a separate section today. So here we've got a picture of Africa and just um, from uh, Google Earth, but showing uh, in lakes effectively, uh, west of Lake Victoria, the outline of the African Rift. Um, and the East African Rift goes the other side of what is a large uh, dome or feature with Lake Victoria more or less central in it. And you can see the nature of the African Rift Valleys today and how it came about that India and Madagascar separated from Africa. So if you were to go back um, 100 million years, you would have seen those rift valleys uh, more or less along the present coastline of Africa today. And uh, another separation has been the uh, Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. For some reason, we've got the outline of um, uh, England and Nova Scotia superimposed on that. I don't believe they were meant to be there. That's central at the top. If we look at the uh, complexity of these structures uh, in the uh, area of the Gulf of Aden, Red Sea, the Arabian plates independent now, all the red triangles are volcanoes, active volcanoes. And uh, you can see how they're concentrated in the rift valley areas. Uh, Erta Ele in the uh, Triangle Red Sea Gulf of Aden is a very spectacular volcanic uh, crater. But um, here we see the name Nubian instead of, or as an alternative to African plate uh, up near the Nile. But um, most people would continue to regard the African plate to include um, the uh, Somali block in the east. Uh, Note Lake Victoria and the um, uh, east and west sectors of the major rift valley, and they ultimately perhaps result in two sections of continent um, breaking entirely away with a new ocean forming. The Red Sea and Gulf of Aden rifted apart only 20 million years ago, and these are new oceans, they're valid oceans. Um, that uh, have not widened particularly far in that time due to the uh, Persian Gulf Eurasian plate uh, margin, which is again a subduction zone effectively. And uh, the Eurasian plate is a huge mass and uh, has, uh, and so are Africa. So is the African plate, as the Red Sea has not had the uh, uh, impetus to open as a broad ocean. Just looking right up to the top right hand corner of the Red Sea um, Gulf of Aden area and the Horn of Africa. And so we're looking at Lake Victoria in the bottom left hand corner. This is a bleak Google type view, satellite view. And uh, it just shows the topography around the broad rift valley of the East African Rift with some central rifting zones quite apparent from the central bottom running up to the words East, Af East African Rift and continuing around in an accurate form with the Ethiopian highlands at the top center and uh, um, meeting in a triple point at the Red Sea Gulf of Arabia. That is the Afar Triangle, which we'll discuss shortly. Uh, there's another view uh, from a different angle of the East and Western Rift Valleys, and they mark fractured edges 
of a great uproar. The sphere that is the plate of Africa. Now, if we look uh, at the uh, area around the Red Sea, Arabian Sea, or um, Gulf of Arabia, um, it too is an uplift, effectively Ethiopia uh, and Somalia in the bottom right. Um, and uh, it's as if Tom Thumb stuck his thumb up the center and you have a, a triple boundary developing there with the East African Rift dividing up to become Arabian Sea and Red Sea um, central axes. The zone in the middle, the Afar Triangle, is one area where you can uh, examine on land the uh, features of the mid-ocean rifts or mid-ocean ridges. Um, another area, of course, is Iceland. So the Afar Triangle region is a, a classic area of study today. And that's the topography with very pronounced Ethiopian highlands on the western side, uh, significant highlands again uh, bordering Somalia. And uh, across the other side of the Red Sea, we have um, islands in Yemen. These are the rift shoulders, um, effectively um, the arches into which the um, central keystone has dropped. And here we have the um, detail of that Afar Triangle with the Ethiopian Plateau and the Amar Mountains of Somali, um, showing Djibouti, very inhospitable zone with a great deal of um, lateral faulting and uh, Graben formation, which are areas that have been by faults, such as there's an enormous thickness of salt uh, resulting from ingression of the uh, Red Sea into this region. There's almost a kilometer thickness of salt in uh, that area of Ebbe, shown in blue. And that's purely by evaporation and repeated ingression from the uh, um, oceans. Ultimately, it will be an ocean. But this is today, um, without it being a crust as yet, it's an example of the early development of oceanic crust, which of course is very much influenced by the um, uh, silica rich uh, crustal area of the um, African plate. And here in red are the uh, volcanoes of this Afar region. Um, very widespread volcanism in recent times. And uh, also again shows the margins or the shoulders of the African rift. And uh, uh, we can see Erta Ali up there in the uh, north of the Afar Triangle region. But uh, Red Sea, Gulf of Aden, uh, Mid-ocean ridges are showed with red dots and in the central portions of the um, uh, oceanic area. And ultimately, this will be a major triple point with the fracturing going down the East African Rift. Here's the reason for those high um, uh, rift shoulders. Uh, it tends to be an up arch due to the heating the crust below and uh, the keystone block drops in to form this broad rift valley, a lot of um, linear faults paralleling it. So we're looking at the three plate types on the right hand side of the diagram. This is a divergent plate boundary where convection currents coming up uh, in the region of the magma are then spreading out and putting a drag on the uh, lithosphere and pulling the plates apart, such that the magma can erupt as volcanoes. Uh, the central um, plate margin shown on the right 
is a typical feature of the Mediterranean, where you've got um, oceanic crust subducting, sometimes against oceanic crust, sometimes against continental crust. And the transform fault or boundary um, is typical of the Dead Sea. So uh, this is spreading without the P. Uh, when the crust is under tension due to dermal uplift, uh, crystal blocks subside. Subside is a sort of keystone collapse and volcanoes develop from magma formed deep in the mantle. And eventually oceanic crust forms as the rift spreads. Oceans thus grow at these mid-ocean ridges and gradually separate the continents. Is the principle of the convection currents, of course. Bunsen burner under a, a beaker of um, fluid and uh, heat focused in the center results in uh, uh, convection currents as the uh, warmer, less dense water rises, spreads, cools, and drops again to be reheated um, at depth. And that principle is the concept behind the plate tectonics, say of um, uh, Africa above the area marked as asthenosphere. Um, and if we look to the left, there's a trench marked, um, which would be on the western side of Africa, where uh, uh, the opposite uh, subduction phase is occurring. But uh, if we wanted uh, a trench on the um, eastern side of the African plate, we have to go as far away is Macquarie Island, south of New Zealand, to find um, the crust um, recycling, as it were, uh, in a subduction zone of that nature. The Earth's oceanic plates moved laterally due to underlying convection currents in the deep mantle. They spread or grow away from the mid-ocean ridges and are drawn down, drawn down into subduction trenches. This also results in slab pull on the plate as that subduction occurs, the um, uh, heavy slab is sliding down into the mantle and it effectively drags the plate. Um, and as this happens, it occurs continuously, this recycling of oceanic crust. There's none known older than 200 million years. In fact, 160 to 180 million years in the Western Pacific is the oldest known. Um, oceanic crust today. The heat source for the Earth, of course, is uh, the liquid outer core, which is uh, probably hotter than the surface of the sun, really. Uh, so there's much residual heat there. And there's also radiometric heat sources within the Earth, which are continuously um, adding to the uh, um, heat content. Typical example of this divergent plate term boundary and continental rifting. The top shows the situation in uh, the African Rift Valley today with a few volcanoes resulting from magma at depth rising through fractures in the main uplifted area. By the second uh, cross section, you have a substance of the keystone to give you a rift valley in which many of those volcanoes would be concentrated or close to that. Then uh, a situation like the Red Sea in the third of these items, as the plates are separating further, there's a thinning of the crust, um, more subsidence, and uh, an ocean basin develops. The mid-ocean um, ridge situation uh, resulting in ocean, new oceanic crust. And finally, um, a situation like Gulf of Aden or the Atlantic Ocean today, Indian Ocean today, where you have broad zones of uh, aging uh, oceanic crust in bands getting from zero age in the center out to 50, 70, 100 million years, and even as old as 160 to 180 million years adjacent to um, the uh, continents of the mid-Atlantic Ocean. 
have had a, a fairly good look at newly develop ocean, newly developing oceans here, and that's the important thing about the uh, African geolo African plate geology today. We and the East African Rift, which is at a very early stage uh, of uparching and rifting. And these form a classic triple point, which is very often seen in the uh, structure of plates on Earth. Not just two plates joining, but frequently three plates joining. Probably in the past, this has been the case up at Thuas, where uh, we can see just vestiges of a join into the Mediterranean so that you had a Dead Sea, Med Sea, Red Sea triple point. And the FR Triangle, our dead center, uh, is, is a depression. Uh, it's one of the few places on Earth where a mid-ocean ridge can be studied on land. Another area, of course, is Iceland. Looking again at the African plate, um, we've studied in detail how uh, oceans develop, and that is, of course, how the original Pangaea fractured, and how uh, Africa separated from the east coast of the United States. Uh, if you trace the oceanic bands of successively older age, 160 to 180 million years ago, um, the uh, West African Book was locked in against the Appalachian Mountains and Florida. And of course, South America was locked in uh, with no Caribbean present, and uh, it was locked in to Gabon, Angola, etc., in Southwest Africa. So, ocean has developed in just the same way as we see the East African Rift developing today, and has resulted over a period of 150 million years in the um, Southern Atlantic Ocean. I think perhaps we can leave that to questions today. Thank you. And that uh, is the African plate. <laughs>